Hi everyone, my name is Georgina Chin and I am an accidental photographer. Today I want to share with you about my story, about how my life took so many different turns. On January 4th this year, I published a book called Birds in My Backyard and raised $80,000 for charity. Um, this charity was to support the rehabilitation of ex-prisoners. Today I share with you how I stumble into this and I hope this will encourage you and believe, encourage you so you can learn to believe in yourself and the many unexpected things that will happen to you. Actually, my story began one fateful afternoon when my boyfriend, who is now my husband, went down on his knees and he proposed to me. He said, I have no money, I have no job, and I have no ring, but I love you. Would you marry me? I look at this guy and I go, what Leo? <laughs> no job, no money, no ring is still. <laughs> so I said, so I said yes. <laughs> I said yes because I love him and because I said I believe in you. And so my journey began. Many years later my husband said, hey, I never bought you that diamond ring. Come, we go shopping and buy you one. So I said, uh-oh, no money, no job, no ring, now go and buy a diamond ring, I'm in trouble. So I said to him, I said, David, really? I don't want a diamond ring. I really don't need one. I don't want to be measured by a diamond ring. You know women, big diamond ring, well, a lot of money in the pocket. Small diamond ring, not so much. So I didn't want that. I didn't want to be measured by the size of my diamond ring. So I said to David, you know, what I really wanted was a camera. I really wanted a camera. And see, the truth is, I wanted a small, compact, point-and-shoot camera because I want to take photos so I can put them on Facebook. <laughs> you know, you take a picture of a, a Kuei Tiao in a hawker center, store number 19, you put it on Facebook and everybody will say, oh yeah, nice, which store, where is this Kuei Tiao shop? So that's what, that was exactly what I wanted to do. But then I realized that this was also going to be an opportunity for me to be famous via social media, Facebook. I'm sure you know, understand what I mean about Facebook. But what happened was I didn't realize that this little small decision I made was going to change my life forever. My birthday finally came again, and so what did I get? I got a professional camera. I thought, ayo, I look at this camera and I said, oh boy, I was going to be in big trouble. I'll never be able to use it. But I said to him, wow, camera, so nice, thank you, I love you so much. And, oh, you know, it's so beautiful. I know you love me so much, but thank you, you know. But then, after everybody left the room, you know what I did? I took everything and put them back in a box. Because, honestly, girls, you would identify with me. I was horrified. I thought, how in the world am I going to use this camera? You know, this is a real big, fancy, professional camera. And me, I got fat fingers. I'll never be able to use it. Besides, Technology and me, we just don't gel, all right? We just don't get along and I look at it and just forget it. So what I did was I neatly packed the camera and all the stuff with it and put it at the back of the cupboard as far away and as high as I could. See, 
If you're a photographer, you know what I did was stupid, but only a ditzy like me would do that. Okay, I put it way back in the cupboard. This was my latest camera and everyone was raving about it and only a ditzy like me would shove it back in the cupboard. A year later, out of guilt, you know what I did? I decided to take it out of the cupboard because I knew the diamond question was going to come out again. So I took it out of the cupboard and go, <gasps> okay, took it out. And you know what I did? I took it out of the box, fidgeted with it, got into my car, and of all places in the world, I ended up in Mandai Orchid Gardens with this camera. Why the Mandai Orchid Gardens? I don't know. I can't tell you why. I just ended up there. When I got there, there was a group of photographers. And you know what? They were all taking a picture of a bird. <laughs> So I look and I said, a bird? <laughs> so I, I, I look at the bird and I said, oh, okay, you know what, I'll look at it. But this bird was different. It was absolutely beautiful. It was fluttering from one orchid to another. And I have to confess, up to that point, I knew nothing about birds in Singapore, except for the crows and the miners. <laughs> you know, I'm sure you identify with me. But then, when I look at it again, it was a crimson sunbird. I found out later that this particular crimson sunbird, believe it or not, happened to be our national bird. <laughs> See what you just learned today? The crimson <laughs> sunbird. <laughs> okay, the, the experience that day opened my eyes to a big new bird world, you know? And I never really thought, you know, that I would do this. It never really ceases to amaze me how much beauty there is out there if we only stop and take the time to look. Let me share with you some lessons I've learned in my journey. My first lesson here was believe in yourselves and the thing that happened to you. Getting the camera was an accident. I hadn't really intended for it, really. And because it was so unfamiliar to me, I was so scared of it, and guess what I did with it? I put it at the back of the cupboard because I thought, I'm not smart enough, I'm not technology savvy, I will never be able to use this camera. So I put it at the back of the cupboard. And I learned later on that, you know what? I am capable, I can do it, because I tried. And because I tried, I began to discover that, hey, you know what? I actually have a little bit of a talent after all. What is your camera? What are the things that you dream about? What, what is it that makes you want to get out there and do the things that you want to do, but because you're afraid? Afraid of failure? Afraid of rejection? Afraid of the unknown? Or maybe afraid that someday you'll be really great? Life is unpredictable. That is a given. Your life and my life. We have so many full of accidents, unplanned events that disrupt our lives and often we try our very best to manage them. And you know what? You know what I did? I tried to hide them in my wardrobe. I take my camera and I hide them in my wardrobe because I was afraid of it. I didn't want to touch it. Now remember, remember the movie Lord of the Rings, Bilbo Baggins? Remember what, Fro remember what Frodo said to Bilbo, Bilbo remem remember what Bilbo said to Frodo in the movie Lord of the Rings? Hey, it's a dangerous business, Frodo, going out of your door. You know, you step onto the road and if you're not, if you don't keep your feet, there's no knowing where you might be swept off to. For me, my door just so happened to be that camera. that set me off to, of all places in the world, Mandai Orchid Gardens. What is your door? What is your road? And are you ready to step out onto it? There are no guarantees where you may be swept off to. There wasn't for Frodo, and there certainly wasn't for me. But what I do know is that if I had stayed at home in that house, I, would have do I wouldn't have done any of these amazing things that I've done today. These, these wonderful things that followed in it, but I hadn't created the circumstances and the opportunities for accidents. 
I would have missed out so much in my life. How did I get from taking photos to doing a book? It all really started with an idea. At first, all I did was post my pictures on Facebook, which became my approval ground. I'm sure you understand what I mean, yeah? But there were so many beautiful pictures, I said to myself, why not put them in a big fat coffee table book so that people can have, people can hold, and people can share? And I have to confess that sometimes it was just a simple, silly idea, but that idea was a brilliant idea to me at that time. Doing a book was hard work, lots of late nights and early mornings, focused tenacity and support of friends was what it took for me to birth this book. I wanted Nikon Singapore to sponsor me, so I called them. I said, hey, hello, Nikon Singapore. I, uh, I'm going to do a book on birds. Would you like to sponsor my project? No. <laughs> hello, uh, Canon Singapore. I'm going to do a book on birds. Would you like to sponsor my project? Uh, no. You know, so after I have to, con after, and I have to confess that there were many times I almost gave up. You know what it's like. No support, so forget it. Just give up on the whole project. But you know what? You know what? I couldn't afford them, and the book was in real danger of ending up in a pile of good ideas that were just too difficult to complete. So what kept me going? Focus. Discovering a purpose to the opportunities that every accidental encounter had for me. I do really believe that everything that happens in our lives happens for a reason. I felt that there was no, I felt that there was a calling for me to complete this book, Birds in My Backyard. My purpose was to share with everybody this newfound bird world that I've seen. I had to discover in the hope that they will appreciate and be grateful for the beauty around me. The purpose served to fuel my passion and give me the focus I needed to complete what I had started. Then the book finally was printed and I held the first copy of the book in my hands. And you know what? I look at the book and I, and I said to myself, fear reared its ugly head once more and I said, uh-oh, who is ever going to buy this book? Who is ever going to buy this book? And I had 1,000 printed and they were going to be delivered to my door. I was in real danger of keeping 1,000 books and not knowing what to do with it. So I said to myself, well, I must pick it up and look at it like a hundred times. I went upstairs, downstairs, into the kitchen, into the garden, and I said, oh, oh, in trouble again. So I said, never mind, Georgina Chin, you are the accidental photographer. You took that pictures, and you are just going to finish it. No looking back, just move forward, finish what you had started. It took me six days to put a launch together. I didn't get anybody to support me or sponsor my project, so I said, go for it, just do it. And you know what? The launch date finally arrived. The morning, that morning, as I was about to do a last minute telly of my guests, Guess what happened? A lot of people call me, hey, Georgina, congratulations. Thank you for inviting me to your launch, but I can't come like a babysitting. Hey, Georgina, thank you for inviting me to your book launch. I can't come like I got tuition. And I go, okay. So I got really upset. So what I did was, you know, I was feeling really down. I was heartbroken and I was feeling really miserable. I prayed and I said, dear God, you told me to do this, so please, please, help me now. I decided to take comfort in my cheap Nescafe coffee and my newspaper, my simple pleasures of life. As I mechanically flipped through the newspaper that morning, guess what? I saw an article that says, DBS CEO is an avid bird watcher. Yes! <laughs> So you know what I did? For some strange reason, I was drawn to that article and I read the paper. And then I threw the paper down, ran upstairs to my room, and I called the secretary. I said, uh, hello, uh, my name is Georgina Chin. I've just published a book and uh, I want to invite your CEO. And she said, you what? 
you want to invite the CEO? I said, yeah, yeah, I want to invite the CEO. My book launch is tonight, and I'm calling him at 9 o'clock in the morning. And I said, he's going to come. He is. She said, you think so? He's CEO, you know, you have to book at him. Book him way six, six months in advance. I said, but he will come. She says, okay, if you feel so strongly about it, then send him an email. And I did. I sent Priyush Gupta, the DBS Bank CEO, an email. And guess what? He came. <laughs> he came to my book launch. I can only call this divine intervention. And I believe this happened because I had a purpose. My motto became, never leave home without your camera, as I never know what nature would present to me. Some of my most amazing encounters and photos were totally unexpected. Things happened that I could not control. I keep learning and learning and learning, practicing and practicing and practicing, adapting and adapting and adapting. And with practice, I became pretty okay. Okay? If I had, I begin to ask myself, did I have a talent? Did I have a gift? I don't think I had either one. But you know what I had? I had passion. Passion drove me. Passion gave me energy. Passion gave me excitement. I would get up at 4 a.m. in the morning to shoot birds. Seriously, I would never get up in the morning unless I have to take a jet star plane to go to Thailand at 4 in the morning. But you know what? I would get up at 4 in the morning. Have you found something you are passionate about? What is your one thing that would make you and get you up in the morning at 4 a.m.? There are simply, there isn't simply time for me to share with you all the amazing things that has happened to me on this journey. So I say to you, find a purpose, discover your passion, and remember that it will be stronger if you learn to live for others. A self-sacrificing person concentrates more on the other than on the self. You see, my book wasn't about me. It was still meant to be for other people, a way to provide other people to go out there to look at the amazing world that exists all around us. A bonus was I was able to raise money so that prisoners can be rehabilitated again into society. Here I want to end by saying I had an accidental journey. This camera and this book has changed me. It taught me resilience. It taught me hope. It gave me aspiration and grit I never thought I had. We all have our own goals. This journey has taught me what it means to work hard for a simple purpose of taking bird photographs and not to be afraid of failure. So here I give all of you, let us not dare to fail. The hardest part to making a dream a reality is to start. And most of the time, doubt and fear is why we don't start at all. Remember the CEO who came to my book launch? Do you want to know why he came? He came because he wanted to meet the girl who had the audacity to call him in the morning and expected him to come to the book launch. <laughs> so he came to my book launch and I said, hey, Mr. Gupta, come, please make a speech at my book launch. And he came and he said, I had to come to the book launch because I wanted to meet the woman who had the audacity to invite me. And you know, if you take, the look, uh, take a look at the word audacity, audacity actually means courage. So I took the courage. My wish for you is to go out there and believe in the accidental things that happens to you. Seize the moment and get your project off the ground. I only found out yesterday that I am the only person in Singapore since 1987 to have been self-funded, self-published, raised $80,000 for a course in Singapore. And every proceed goes straight to charity. Thank you so much.